Good morning and welcome to episode three of, of what are we calling it, Dave's Pug Mug? <laughs> that absurd dog object that we're making a blanket mold of and we're going to rotocast in resin. Um, this week is all about hand laying up silicone rubber. It's kind of a slow, tedious process. There's a lot of layers and a lot of waiting between layers, but the good news is anybody can do it with minimal tools. It's very simple to do, and you can make a very effective mold from which you can make good castings, and you don't need a lot of tools or technology to do it. So stick around, and we'll go forward and make this mold. Next step here is gonna to be to fill in these big voids all under in here and fill them in solid. They can't have any Brit, there can't be a dip in there for the mold shell to come off. So this is going to be the thickest and most solid part of the mold right in here. Mixing up more rubber. Just like before, we're going to mash that rubber down in there, making very certain that we don't catch air. Just fill it in, fill in. I'm going to wet it all out. Then you're going to see what I'm going to do to economize on the amount of rubber that we're going to use. We'll resort to trickery and magic to sort of save on rubber. Like that, like so, just like that. And then let's take some pieces of rubber. I cut up a mold into little chunkies and I'm just gonna jam these chunkies down in there. See that? That's just a chunk of an old mold. And this is recycling rubber so that we don't have to use quite so much fresh rubber as we would have to use. Trick is to not catch air between the chunkies. Here's a great example of when time and materials come into conflict. Like I'm gonna save some materials, some rubber doing this, but it's definitely taking me more time to do this than it would take me to just simply use new rubber and fill it up with new rubber. So it's, you're always balancing, you know, what's more important to you, your time or your wallet? And if, a, if a, you are fortunate enough to have a good commercial account, like a major studio or something like that, paying for it, I can tell you that they would much prefer to pay for the materials and pay for the time because they understand that the time costs more. It's worth more. But if you're a hobbyist, a DIYer, whatever, I'm showing you this technique because it's a great way to recycle old molds that you would otherwise have to throw out and you're saving money on rubber. Now that area is getting really nicely filled up. So another thing I can do besides adding solid chunks of rubber is to add polyethylene mini fiber and that's this ultra fine powdery plastic and all it does is act as a thickener to make this peanut buttery resin even more goopy. And as you can see, it really does make it goopy. You can mix this step to the point where it's practically a paste, a thick paste, but we don't need to do that. So we're gonna just keep applying this stuff. See, that really stays in place with the added mini fibers. I've moved my base of operations to my house. And the reason for that is that uh, I'm gonna put a layer of rubber on here. It's Friday, my video's out this morning. So I, normally I would take the weekend off, but I've got a lot of work to do. And uh, I wanna put a layer of rubber on this guy every few hours and still live like a normal human life, locked up in my house like the rest of America. So we're going to go ahead in here, begin in this area right in here to fill this deep well. And what I have done is uh, laid out the rubber pieces that I'm going to use to fill this. I just wanted to show you, you can take the time and cut out some rubber pieces and you will see how these rubber pieces are going to fit in there and fill that well really nice because this needs to be a solid area. You can't have this undercut in here and get the mother mold off. I put our dog here on a turntable and that's just so I can work on the up surfaces. It just makes it a lot easier. To, to work on the whole thing all at once. Let me show you. It's very uh, Fred Flintstone level engineering. The whole thing is, is built from scrounged lumber. But what this does is it allows me to work, like I'm gonna work, start here, work on this surface. Then when, I'm, when this cures up a little bit, I can turn it here and work in these areas. And since it won't hold itself in position, 
I have this incredibly well-engineered high-tech locking system. Put that in here, and let's say I want to hold it, say, like that. It doesn't want to be, it doesn't want to hold like this, so I'll just lock it in place like that. Incredibly expensive, valuable piece of uh, high-tech equipment, and now it's held in place very firmly, and I can work on it. I, you know, you go to, you say to me, why on earth would you take the trouble? to go to all the work to build something like this. And I say to you, the amount of time and energy that this thing is gonna save me over the next few days as I use it uh, is well worth it. These are exactly the kind of setups you do, not to take time, but to save time. All right, let's see if we can't get this deep spot in the mold filled up with the rubber pieces I cut. It's gonna be super important to butter them up really well and, uh, and Take the time to push them in there carefully. Get them all the way seated down inside down there. I'm just making sure that I get a really nice build. I don't want any air in between any of those pieces. That really is important. Voids in the mold are to be avoided. This, this rubber will gel in a couple of hours. It'll be fully, it won't be fully gelled, but it'll be gel enough, gelled enough to hold in place, to keep itself perfectly in place. And so we can turn this mold and do other areas and just keep working on it all around, going around and around and around, working on it in you know, one quadrant at a time, not even a quadrant, it's probably like, more like a fifth of the thing at a time. I tend to underestimate how thick I've put on the rubber. And then when I cut the mold open, I discover that it's too thin in spots and, and can be floppy and misshapen. So these rubber cubes serve as a thickness gauge. Once I get them buried, once they're completely covered in rubber, I know that in those areas, I have a minimum thickness so that the rubber will hold its shape. Remember this mold we made? Now is when we want to put it to work. I'm pouring rubber at home. I don't have my vacuum tank here. I'm going to have to go with trickery to de-air the rubber. So one technique you can use is you pour in a thin bead sort of down the line. But then I'm going to show you a technique um, that's even better and more effective than that. Bubbles rise. So if you pour in a thin layer, the bubbles that are in there are going to rise to the top. They've already lar largely risen out and really there's only really little ones still left in there. But you can pop those out with a hair dryer. So then you just work layer to layer. Same thing, keep going. Put on the next layer. When you scrape the cup, you really get air bubbles. Hit those dogs and they pop right out. See how they popped out? There are times and places where you can manually pop the bubbles out and uh, it works like a champ. All right, these things are nicely stuck on now. And so they're there just so we can bury them. And when we bury them, we'll know exactly how thick the rubber is at this point. Let's get them buried. Usually it takes a couple of applications to fully cover the dots. Rubber will kind of settle and it'll probably take another, at least another coat. But now I'm very certain that this area of the mold has enough rubber on it that it won't collapse. It won't, uh, think of a balloon, an empty balloon, how floppy it is. You don't want that in a rotational mold. You want the, the, the wall thickness of the mold to be sufficient that it's kind of s keeps its shape by itself, but not so massively thick that, you know, you, the last thing you want is to waste the rubber. It's too expensive to waste. I poured this yesterday, so it should be cured ready to go. Let's find out. Let's see, can I just get it going here? Get it started. Usually it just will pop right out. Yep. Here it comes. Dun da da da. Nice. Came out perfect. Big one came out fine. Let's see what the little one. Can I get it? Get it started. There we go. Now it comes. Oh yeah. All right. <laughs> perfect. All right.
This is going to create the partying line on this mold. So we're going to wrap it like this and like this and like that. How brilliant is this? It's going to work perfect. Let's do it. Start at the end of the cut strip and run a large bead and put a similar goober of rubber onto the thing itself. Okay, so let's start it. Let's start it in position. Not this thing. A little more under there. All right. We have to figure out how to hold it in position while it cures, while the rubber cures. And the easiest way to do that is with straight pins. You probably can't not even see this, but I am going to pin the thing into place. I'm just taking a straight pin and jamming it down in there. And that's just enough to tack it into place. I don't like to put the rubber on too far ahead of where I'm going because otherwise you really can make a mess. So I add the, I kind of put the rubber glue on there, if you will, as I work my way down. I'm angling the pins so that they're holding at a different angle. And that's good. You can't have too many pins. The pinholes, by the way, will never, well, as soon as you pull the pins out, the pinholes close up, so the pins don't matter at all. Now I'm gonna, we're gonna have a hole, which we're gonna fill later. We won't worry about that. What we will do is worry about this landing up here, like that. And we will worry about coming around here. Let me goober up my stick. So let's get lots of rubber coming up the rubber. And lots of rubber here on this side. Okay, let's get that into position. More or less like that. Again, we're gonna tack it in place with pins. And the pins, amazingly, do a pretty good job of holding it into place. I have the parting line going up both sides of the mold. So now the only thing left to do is do the parting line across the top and hook the two parting lines together. Neat as you please, cram some rubber in there. A nice little block of rubber to fit in there. Cram that in there. Now, we'll do the same thing on the other side. We're gonna fill in these gaps. I pre-cut a little piece of rubber that should fit right in there. These are all just out of my strip mold. Put that in there. Oh yeah, now let's get a good bead of rubber over the top. Tie all this stuff together like that. Come around to here like that. And we'll just get that far and secure this top piece in place. So that means, as we know, we're gonna put rubber on the bottom of this strip Get this thing buttered up. Okay, very good. Nice. All right, let's put this in place. Just like that, just set that on top like that. And like this. And of course, we're gonna hold everything in place with straight pins. Lots and lots of straight pins inserted at angles. So they kind of interlock each other. Let's pull this all the way. That thing shoved in there so they can really hold on to the rubber. Same with this on this side. Push that thing in there. Good. Now come around to this side. And what we want to do is to put this in here like that. Put this here. And with this piece in place, we're pretty close to having the majority of the work done on this mold. Remember those thin strips of rubber we pulled out of the mold? If there's any area that's going to flop, those are the areas that might flop. And those ribs will serve as reinforcing in those areas. This method that I showed you here is very low tech. It's very achievable with hand tools. Anyone can do it. It doesn't require special equipment. You notice I haven't de-aired any of this rubber. You can de-air it, uh, but, but I haven't needed to. And this top coat that I'm putting on here is just a smoothing coat. Just seals it all up, smooths it out. Should give it a, and should give it a nice finish. 
Let's take a look at how we did. Pretty nice, huh? <laughs> yeah, we're getting there. We are getting there. Good. We got the blanket mold made and I'm glad because that was a lot of work. There's a lot of layers of rubber and a lot of hours of waiting between layers. Um, but the good news is that this is most of the work of building a handmade laid up mold like this. It's this blanket that's all the work because putting on the shell and putting on the cradle that holds it to the rotation machine, that's easy and that'll go by really quick. And then we'll be re ready to make castings. Looking forward to cutting this mold open next week. Uh, it should be exciting. <laughs> I hope it came out good. You never know till you cut it open. That's the joy and fun of mold making. Hey, if you like the video, hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments, fire them down below. I've got a lot of comments in, a lot of questions, which I'm happy to answer. And I love hearing from all of you. Thank you to all the new subscribers. And I'm very grateful that you're all here and take the time to watch. And if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.